Hey guys, Spud here, and today we're going to take a look at a topic that has been heavily requested by my viewers, patrons, and fans at large since the release of DCS World 2.9. And that is, how do I make my personal copy of DCS look so beautiful? Or some variation to that basic question. And while it's taken me a while to really fine-tune my graphical settings in DCS World 2.9, it is my belief that 2.9, with its DLAA, DLSS, FXR, and multi-threading, will democratize the DCS World experience and allow DCS to not just run, but thrive on more hardware than ever before. A lot of viewers out there tend to think that I must do some sort of post-processing or have some filtering program such as Reshade on my PC that adds the color and depth to my recordings of DCS. This really couldn't be further from the truth. All of the footage on my channel is 100% stock, non-modified DCS world footage unless it's turned to black and white. Everyone out there rightly thinks that all of the trailers and promotional footage put out by Eagle Dynamics are absolutely gorgeous. And understandably, some people get a bit disappointed by the graphics of DCS when they get it onto their own PCs and hop into their very first training mission in the free-to-play TF-51D Mustang. At this point, however, I believe all gamers know this is not an issue that is limited to DCS, but is true of the entire gaming industry, who employ teams of professionals to create the most stunningly beautiful trailers possible to promote their work. But we are all very lucky, because Eagle Dynamics trailers are made up of footage that comes straight from the game itself, thanks to the vast amount of cinematic tools built into DCS World itself, and thus, all of the tools to make DCS World look absolutely breathtaking are all built right into DCS and in our PCs. And yes, I know I have a rather cutting edge PC, but many of these tips and settings will work on any PC or any hardware combination. Whether you're on the red team or the green team, your PC is brand new or 10 years old now. First thing we will do is take a look at the settings within your copy of DCS World that will heavily influence your graphics and performance. Then we'll look at the NVIDIA control panel and finish up in the mission editor. I still firmly believe that 90% of improving your graphical experience in DCS is a function of the mission editor and is something that any DCS pilot can influence regardless of your PC specs. Of course, these settings will not be a one-size-fits-all, and you'll want to adjust all of these settings to suit your own PC and your own needs, and this is a real game of trial and error to find that sweet spot for your machine. Okay guys, to access our options from the main DCS World menu, we want to go up to the top left here and click on the small gear icon. This will take us to our options menu, and by default it'll first take us to our system tab. However, we'll probably hit a couple of the other tabs here to get to all of those small options that could affect your graphical fidelity versus performance in your copy of DCS World. However, we're going to be spending the majority of our time together today here on the system tab. We're going to be moving down the row of options, starting from the top left and then finishing off here on the very bottom right. And while it has taken me a while to kind of get to the very best settings in DCS 2.9 for my PC, I'm at a point here where I can really talk about the reasoning behind why I chose a specific option 
and why you might want to choose the same or something different. So starting up from the top left here, we have resolution. We want to ensure that we set the native resolution for the screen, monitor, TV, headset, or whatever you're using to play DCS World in the box here. Failing to do so could result in artifacting, screen tearing, or other issues with the GUI, and maybe just having a very small window to play DCS World on. Moving on down the list, we have monitors. We need to set this to reflect how many screens we want to use to play DCS World. I'm currently using one screen, an LG Ultra Wide at 4K with G-Sync compatibility. It's a monitor that I've used for quite a while now and that I really, really love. Coming down, we have resolution of cockpit displays. This is the very first option here that is gonna really start affecting your graphical fidelity versus performance in DCS. The dropdown option here will show at what resolution the displays arrayed around your cockpit are rendered at. This could be everything from the TADS feed in your AH64D to the TCS feed in your F14 Tomcat to the targeting pod feed in all of the different aircraft that have targeting pod capability. Now, interestingly enough, this setting also governs the resolution at which the reflections in the mirrors that are gonna be arrayed around the canopy bow of your aircraft are rendered at. And thus, this is why this can be such a performance hog for lower end PCs. So if you prefer to have a really nice looking feed from your TADS or targeting pod or TCS, bump this setting up to a higher setting and then turn mirrors off by default in the gameplay tab over here. Keep in mind, you can always turn mirrors on and off on the fly by hitting the M key or a similar keybind or clicking on those mirrors in your favorite module. Setting the setting to 1024 every frame or 512 every frame will lock DCS World into that particular resolution setting. Setting it to the non-locked options will allow DCS World to scale the resolution of those displays to meet performance needs. Moving on down the list to our next option, this is one of the most important options when it comes to graphical fidelity and performance in DCS World, and where some of the biggest changes in DCS 2.9 come in. I currently use two different settings depending on what I'm doing in DCS World. If I'm flying in single player, or creating a tutorial for you guys, or playing in a PvE environment or player versus enemy environment, I like to use DLAA to get as beautiful of graphical and fidelity as possible for you guys on YouTube. If I'm playing in a PvP or player versus player environment where I need to see other aircraft from as far away as possible and be able to ID the type of aircraft from as far away as possible, I like to change this from DLAA over to MSAA and set MSAA to four times. However, we are going to have a lot more jaggies around our scene in DCS using MSAA than DLAA. Now, the truly democratizing feature of DCS World 2.9 here is DLAA with upscaling. This will allow lower spec PCs with smaller graphics cards in the RTX category to get better performance while also getting better graphical fidelity out of DCS World. I tend to try and keep upscaling off as much as possible to avoid smearing as well as other artifacting as I'm playing DCS World. However, if you need that extra bump in performance, try upscaling with DLSS and try to start off with quality and if you find yourself needing more performance, walk, walk your way on down the list here. We always want to try and stick with as much quality as possible. So we'll go back to my previous options here. And moving down the list, we have a sharpening slider now in DCS World 2.9. This sharpening slider allows us to resharpen the rather fuzzy image 
that anti-aliasing will give us in an attempt to get rid of all those jagged edges. Having too little sharpening will make the scene appear to be rather fuzzy and soft, but having too much sharpening is just going to reintroduce most of those jagged edges that we tried to get rid of by fine-tuning our anti-aliasing options. I tend to find my sweet spot is between 0.5 and 0.7 depending on how I'm looking at things around the scene in DCS. As a result, I tend to try and usually keep it around 0.6 to 0.5, but uh, your mileage will definitely vary. Coming to textures and terrain textures, these are two of the most fundamental options when it comes to increasing your visual fidelity in DCS world. Textures governs the quality of textures of all the objects around you. The cockpit in front of you, the edge of your wing as you look over your shoulder, other aircraft around you, vehicles like tanks and trucks on the ground, and things of that nature that are placed in the environment. Whereas terrain textures govern the quality of the textures on the terrain over which you fly, whether down low in a helicopter or way up high in an F-15. We need to protect these two options as much as possible to make DCS World look as nice as possible. So I recommend trying to make compromises on other options while trying your best to keep textures and terrain textures as high as possible. Moving on down, we have our first option when it comes to shadows. Now shadows are a big topic when it comes to graphic settings in DCS and especially DCS 2.9 now. Shadows are really what give us the kind of depth and punchiness to the graphics in DCS world, especially the shadows that are gonna be cast on the terrain during early hours of the day and late hours of the evening. This is one of the big reasons why I always try to fly not at 12 noon to give you guys a little bit more sense of scale and depth in my videos. We want to try and keep shadows set to high or as high as possible, but lock these down to medium and low if you find yourself needing that extra bump in performance. I recommend trying to stay away from flat only if at all possible. Flat shadows blur here will only take effect if flat shadows are used. So if you don't have flat only set under shadows and terrain object shadows set to flat, this setting will kind of be kind of unused. So it really doesn't matter whether you have that set to on or off. However, if your PC requires you to have flat shadows turned on, I recommend turning flat shadows blur on to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. Secondary shadows is an interesting one. Secondary shadows will allow DCS World to draw secondary shadows that come from secondary light sources. What I mean by this is when you're on, say, an airfield in the evening as the sun is setting and the moon is starting to come up, the sun is going to be the primary light source. Well, then the moon will then become the primary light source. This setting allows DCS World to draw shadows from lights arrayed around the aircraft carrier deck and arrayed around an airfield. Now, this is going to be a pretty large hit to your performance for a pretty nice bump in visual graphical fidelity. For those of you who just want to jump on and fly and make everything look as good as possible while getting the best performance you possibly can get, you can probably turn off secondary shadows. But if your goal is to make DCS World look as beautiful and realistic as possible, I'd recommend taking the performance hit and turning on secondary shadows. This is also one that is gonna be very important for those screenshot junkies who really like to take the best, most beautiful screenshots possible. SSS or screen space shadows, the next one on down, is an interesting one. It's an option that will allow you to have more realistic and more depth to the shadows that are cast in DCS World, but is a major, major performance hog. This SSS can create a lot of issues when it comes to screen tearing and stuttering 
for a lot of users in DCS world. And interestingly enough, I found that this setting was one of the biggest settings to clash with Windows Defender antivirus. So kind of one of those random things, but uh, if you are a screenshot junkie and you're just looking for those very beautiful shots of jets on say on the carrier deck in the rain, this is gonna be an option you definitely wanna turn on for those really, really gorgeous shots. And next, coming on down, we have our visible range. This is going to dictate how far away from your aircraft DCS World is going to start to draw objects like aircraft, terrain, objects on the terrain like buildings, things of that nature. I find that I can run extreme with my very high-end PC, but DCS World really doesn't even draw terrain and objects all the way out to the extreme view distance that I can get while flying around. So I recommend kind of topping out in the ultra option here, and that's gonna be probably about the best graphical fidelity you can get from your PC, regardless of whether you have a crazy high-end PC or you have a lower-end PC that's maybe like from last gen. If you have a lower spec PC, you can move it down to high, but high is kind of where I see the kind of uh, returns and performance kind of drop off. Medium and low don't really give that much of a boost in performance, and high is going to be about the lowest you want to go for getting a really nice view outside of your canopy as you're flying around in DCS. Civilian traffic will generate random civilian traffic around the roads, rail networks, uh, things of that nature in DCS. This is going to be a major hit to your CPU for a gain that is kind of off-putting in my opinion. You see this kind of like randomly generated traffic driving right through military convoys that are being bombed and hit by Mavericks and things like that without stopping. They'll drive through and clip right through vehicles that are placed on roads and things. So I recommend just turning this off for the immersion perspective and the fact that DCS World tends to simulate total war in most instances where you're not really gonna have civilians just driving around willy-nilly. Next up, we have clouds and our clouds option, which governs the quality of the clouds that are drawn in the sky around us. I recommend setting this to ultra even for lower spec PCs, because I don't really find a much of a performance hit between moving from high to ultra or even standard to high and ultra. However, the clouds are gonna look so, so much better for you. And the clouds around you as you fly through cloud surfing and DCS are going to be a major bump in the immersion factor for you. Next down the list we have water. And water is going to be another option that I recommend just going to high quality right off the bat, even on a lower spec PC, because I find moving the water quality between medium and high doesn't really give that much of a boost in performance, but also the immersion factor of being able to look off the carrier deck right out into the ocean and see the swells, the white caps, all that stuff that really kind of brings you into the moment in DCS for not really that much of a degradation in the performance of your PC. Moving down, we have SSAO and SSLR, which is for screen space ambient occlusion and screen space light reflections. These two options are big performance hogs, and most DCS World pilots just playing the game, flying in a mission, flying in a multiplayer server, enjoying a campaign, are probably not going to notice too much of a difference when you actually turn these on or off. Really the only place where I see this really making a big difference is going to be on a carrier deck that is wet because of rain due to the light reflections on SSLR and kind of the little bit of a bump in graphical fidelity of the lighting that uh, screen space ambient occlusion will give you. So if you don't have a super high spec PC, I recommend just turning these two options to off and you really won't notice that much of a difference anyway. For lens effects here, this has zero uh, difference on performance. This is really just up to your personal preference. I like to have flare turned on. I'm not a big fan of the dirt or the dirt plus flare, but I think most people either have this to none or flare. Again, no performance hit at all. For heat blur here, I recommend for most people who maybe don't have the most cutting edge PC out there, just set this to low. 
it's kind of a nice effect that's very much a immersion factor when you're taxiing out with a mass launch from an airfield and there's lots of jets around you and you want to see that blur from the jet exhaust as they taxi around around you um, as well as of course on the carrier deck with lots of jets taxiing out to the catapults but the difference between the graphical fidelity of low and high is pretty darn negligible and there is a bit of a performance degradation moving from low to high. So unless you have a super high end PC, just go ahead and set this option to the low option. For motion blur here, this is going to be another big performance hit for not much gain unless you're a big screenshot junkie. So for most folks, I would just set that to off. The low option doesn't look all that great in DCS World 2.9 in my opinion, so if you either want to have this set to off or high if you're on a high spec PC and you want that motion blur. We then have the motion blur amount slider down here between 1 and 3. When you do have motion blur set to high and you're trying to get those nice screenshots, I think that more than about two is a little bit of overkill and tends to make things look a little unrealistic, but uh, that is up to you and your mileage will of course vary. Depth of field, just leave this turned off. Even on a super high spec PC, this will half your frames per second and just kill your performance. And it really doesn't even look that great. Who wants to make uh, jets look miniature in DCS world anyway? For screenshot format, this one kind of depends on how big your hard drive is and how many screenshots you typically take while flying in DCS world. If you're somebody like me who takes screenshots and does a lot of editing to them in, in a uh, program like Photoshop, you definitely want to have these set to PNG. This will allow you to upscale and downscale the images without losing any graphical fidelity of those screenshots. However, PNGs are a larger file size than JPEGs are. So if you take a lot of screenshots and you like looking at it, but you don't really do much with them and your hard drive's a little bit on the smaller side, go for JPG. Color grading is a fun new option that's available in DCS 2.9. That of course is available to you on the fly as you're flying in game. And of course you can kind of go to some fun different kind of color changes to DCS world. Um, and there is zero performance hit here. It's just whatever you like. I tend to really not use it all that much. Moving up to the top right here, we have our clutter and grass and forest visibility sliders. In my opinion, when it comes to immersion in DCS, we want to have these sliders as far to the right hand side, as far to the full side as possible because I really hate it when terrain objects pop in randomly as I'm flying, especially if I'm flying a helicopter down low. And having these sliders pushed all the way to the right hand side to the 1500 and 100% side will make sure that DCS draws these objects as far as possible away from your aircraft. These are two options that just like over here with our terrain textures and textures options, I like to protect these and make my kind of compromises in other places in order to get more performance if I were to need it. For forest details factor, you can pull this one back if you require um, some extra performance for your PC. It doesn't really make that big of a difference in my opinion in how forests look, especially if you are a fixed wing guy and you're usually flying way high and way fast anyway, and you're not really looking at the details of the um, forest down below you. However, if you're a helicopter guy, you're probably going to want to keep the forest details factor and scenery details factor up higher as well. I tend to prioritize the scenery details factor above the forest details factor because the scenery details factor is going to make things like hangars and other objects around air bases that you're up close to, even as a fixed wing pilot, look a lot nicer. Moving on down. We have a very important option here, preload radius. This is going to determine the amount of terrain around your aircraft when you spawn in that is preloaded into your system's memory. Now, there's two very different use cases for this option here, and they can affect your load times into DCS world in single player, but especially multiplayer quite heavily. 
If you have DCS installed on a very fast storage application, like an M.2 drive or an NVMe drive, or just a very fast SATA hard drive, you can bring this preload radius down because DCS is gonna have no problem pulling assets for the terrain from your hard drive and getting them onto your screen. However, if you have DCS world loaded up onto a physical hard drive, that's going to be a bit slower when it comes to pulling those assets down out of your hard drive and then getting them through the system and onto your screen. You're going to want to bring the preload radius up so that way you don't find yourself getting into a stuttering situation when you hit the edge of that preloaded radius around your aircraft. However, for those of you with physical hard drives, moving the slider up is going to increase your load times, especially getting into multiplayer servers. For those of us with NVMe drives, bringing this guy down is going to reduce our load times into multiplayer servers with not much of a downside when it comes to hitting the edge of that radius already loaded around your aircraft. I tend to find and have found for a long time now that kind of my sweet spot is around 50,000 kilometers of preloaded terrain around my aircraft when I spawn in. Next, we have chimney smoke density. This is an option that affects the World War II maps and the Caucasus more than it does the Middle Eastern focused maps. It's something that really doesn't matter for me personally when it comes to immersion, and so I tend to kind of tune this slider on down. However, if you're a big World War II guy and you are usually skimming the rooftops in a P-47 looking for German panzers on a World War II map, you may want to bring this slider up to make it a little bit more realistic to make the towns that you're zipping over below you seem a little bit more lived in. But of course your mileage may vary and if you need extra performance, I would not hesitate to bring this slider on down. Gamma, of course, is basically going to adjust the brightness and contrast of your copy of DCS World when you're in-game. This is an option that you can change on the fly when you're in-game and has zero effect on performance. It's totally up to you whether you want a more darker picture or you want a lighter picture. In DCS 2.9, I tend to find that my personal sweet spot is around 1.8. The external field of view slider is the default external field of view that you'll see when you go to a external view such as the F2 view looking at your own aircraft. This is going to be set by default to a option that DCS thinks is going to be perfect for the aspect ratio of your screen. I haven't changed it from the very first time I loaded up DCS 2.9 and it gave me 78 degrees for my rather wide ultra wide monitor. LOD switch factor is going to be a pretty big one when it comes to graphical fidelity versus performance. This is going to determine the changeover distance away from your aircraft when LODs or essentially 3D objects around you are going to switch from their high detailed version to their lower detailed version. Again, this is something that I tend to change whether I'm playing in single player and PvE versus PvP. If I'm playing in PvP, I tend to move this slider a bit to the right hand side here to get a detailed model as far out as possible so that way I can VID targets to determine, hey, is that a Su-27 or an F-14 over there from as far away as possible. Moving on down the list, we have a very welcome new addition in DCS World 2.9, the Max FPS slider here. We want to set the max FPS of DCS World to just underneath the maximum refresh rate of the screen we're using to play DCS World on. For instance, I have a 144Hz monitor and with a maximum refresh rate of 144 frames per second, and I've set the slider to 140. This has really reduced stuttering and screen tearing and other artifacting that I've seen in DCS World and is a very welcome addition, like I said before. So if you have, say, a 60 uh, Hertz monitor, you want to bring the slider on down to 55, just underneath the maximum refresh rate of your screen, and so on and so forth for whatever the max refresh rate is of your current screen you're using. Moving on down, we have anzeotrophic filtering. 
Now this is an option that's really going to have very little effect on the performance of your copy of DCS World, but can have a pretty outsized impact on how things look. It's essentially going to change the sharpness of textures that are viewed at an off angle. A good example of this would be like say you're lining up on the runway or you're going down a really long taxiway and that runway kind of runs way out towards the horizon in your screen or that taxiway runs way out towards the horizon in that screen and it's going to allow you to see like say runway markings a lot more clear a lot more sharper the higher this setting is so i recommend 16 times there terrain object shadows very much connected to the other shadows options that we talked about earlier I would leave this to default. If you need a boost in performance, I recommend trying to uh, make compromises in other options we've talked about. But if not, go to flat and going to off should be a last resort because DCS world is going to look really goofy and really flat if you turn terrain object shadows to off. Global cockpit illumination is an interesting one. I know some folks really like it and some folks really don't like it. I tend to fall into the latter camp where global cockpit illumination is going to be a pretty big hit on the performance in DCS, but it's going to essentially reflect colors that are around your cockpit into your cockpit, which for me is a little bit off-putting when it comes to, say, sitting on a grass taxiway in the P-51, and my cockpit is, has a green glow to it. So not really my favorite thing, so I tend to leave that off, but your mileage, of course, will vary. Messages font scale and scale GUI are just multipliers for the default font size in DCS world and the default size of the graphical user interface in DCS. Because I'm playing on a 4K monitor and I do a lot of mission editing, I've pushed the scale of the GUI to 1.25 times. Uh, so that way all those little buttons and little like things you can click on in the mission editor are just slightly bigger for us to be able to use easily. Rain droplets is definitely an option that can cause a big degradation of performance, but a pretty big bump in graphical fidelity. This is something that DCS World players really wanted quite a few updates ago now, and the rain droplets have just gotten better and better. However, the rain droplets will show up when you're sitting inside of a hangar or a shelter, so Eagle Dynamics needs to go back and try to fix all the leaks in the roofs of all the shelters and hangars in DCS, but it is still a very cool effect that is something that DCS World players lobbied for hard, that's for sure. V-Sync or Vertical Sync, you want to have that turned on if you find that DCS World is pumping out more frames than your screen or monitor or TV can handle, and that will limit the amount of frames that your graphics card will pump out to the max refresh rate of that screen you're using. So it's very similar to the max FPS slider up here, but turn that on if you find that even the max FPS slider and having that just underneath your uh, max refresh rate of your screen is still creating that artifacting and tearing. Full screen will change whether the program is running in a windowed format or a full screen format. If you're learning a module, I recommend having full screen here unchecked to keep DCS World in a windowed format to make it much easier for you to alt tab out to say YouTube videos or look at a PDF of a manual, uh, look at kneeboards, things of that nature will be much, much easier in windowed format. However, depending on your system and your PC, this could have a pretty outsized impact on performance. So if you're having a hard time and you're not sure why you've kind of figured out all your other options, but you're still having an issue with performance, try a different combination of whether full screen or windowed mode, and that can kind of give you a big uh, boost. Cursor confined to game window is really gonna affect those of you guys who have multiple monitors and are trying to play DCS World on one of those monitors and maybe say, have a tutorial YouTube video on another and a manual on your third monitor. This will keep the cursor on your game monitor in order to make sure that you don't lose it as you're trying to flip through YouTube videos and things of that nature. Okay guys, now that we've finished with going over all of the different options here on the system tab, let's go up to the gameplay tab and take a look at two options in here that could affect your performance versus graphical fidelity. The first option in here is going to be the mirrors. 
and these will turn off or on your mirrors by default when you load into the cockpit of your favorite module. Of course, as we talked about earlier, when we talked about resolution of cockpit displays, mirrors in your aircraft can have a pretty outsized effect on the performance you get from your PC and from DCS as a whole. Keep in mind that mirrors can be toggled on and off on the fly by either hitting the M key or related keybind or clicking on those mirrors in question in your favorite module. Moving on down, the last option here that is gonna affect your performance in DCS is wake turbulence. Now this isn't something we can see, so it's not really related to graphical fidelity, but it is related to immersion in that uh, wake turbulence will increase your immersion when formation flying, trying to hook up with a tanker, or feeling the burble behind the island of the aircraft carrier as you come in to snag a wire on an approach. If you are a server admin and your server is going to have a lot of players on it, you may want to consider turning wake turbulence off. Having the server calculate wake turbulence for all those different players in a mission can degrade the performance of your dedicated server or local server pretty heavily. So keep that in mind. Okay guys, here we are at the NVIDIA control panel and we want to ensure we're taking a look at the Manage 3D Settings tab on the left hand side here. Because it would take so long to go through each individual setting in the NVIDIA control panel, and because your mileage will vary so significantly based off of your graphics card and your PC build, I'm just going to give you guys some concepts to work with when it comes to trying to edit these settings in conjunction with DCS World 2.9. It's my belief that with DCS 2.9's heavy integration with NVIDIA and NVIDIA drivers, we want to try and give DCS as much control as possible over its own graphical settings. So as a result, you'll see extraneous options in the NVIDIA control panel here are turned off, and options that are available in DCS world are under the application controlled option. This will allow DCS as much control over its own options as possible. When it comes to power management modes, you always want to make sure that you are preferring maximum performance. This also goes for Windows settings. You want to ensure that your PC is getting the maximum power available for maximum performance and isn't throttling itself unnecessarily because your desktop PC thinks it's, that it's a dinky Windows laptop. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and head back to DCS World and open up the mission editor to talk about how the vast majority of your graphical fidelity can be upped by simple options in the mission editor when you're creating your practice scenarios and missions. All right guys, we're back in the cockpit after all that work in the menus with a very simple setup. We just have a single FA-18 Hornet over the eastern desert of the Syria map. All of the options in the mission editor when it comes to time of day, date, and weather are set to their defaults. So that means we're flying about 12 noon in June with none of our weather presets or custom clouds selected. As a result, the terrain around us is looking very bleh, very dull, flat, and boring. None of the ridge lines off to our 3 o'clock here are casting any shadows. Neither are the buildings of the hamlets that were off to our left-hand side, and even the power lines along this highway that is just below our aircraft here are casting any shadows, making everything just look very flat, very boring, and very dull. This is what a lot of new players hopping into their first training mission in the majority of models in DCS World are going to be confronted with. And as a result, I really can't blame them for being let down by the graphics quality of DCS World. Now, that's not to say that this is a knock on the developers of DCS World. As a professional airline pilot, I can tell you guys that looking out the window at 12 noon in the summertime on a cloudless day can look just as boring, just as flat, and just as dull in real life. But thankfully here in DCS World, we can just hop over to the mission editor and really spruce things up and make things look a lot more dramatic, a lot more interesting, and really allow new players, no matter what their PC specs are, 
to kind of get that graphical fidelity they were hoping for when they watched all those awesome YouTube videos and trailers. So let's hop into Mission Editor and fix this thing up. All we need to do here, guys, is open up the Time and Weather panel by clicking on the little cloud icon in the left-hand column of buttons. We can see that the scene that we just took a look at was on the 1st of June at 12.35 in the afternoon. Now this is probably the worst possible combination of date and time when it comes to casting shadows across the terrain. We could also see that it was making the cockpit lighting look a little bit odd as well because the glare shields and canopy sills in our cockpit we're shading our instrument panel and consoles, which is kind of off-putting when you see that juxtaposed to the very bright terrain around you. So let's go ahead and change the month to March, and that should bring the sun down lower in the sky a little bit and give us a little bit of a softer hue to the lighting. And we'll change the time of day here to just before sunset. I always recommend that if you're trying to make DCS World look the best it possibly can, to always fly in either the early morning just after sunrise or in the late afternoon just before sunset. This will give you the most punchiness to the colors, the best color palette, the most depth to the scene, and always, always, always fly with clouds, which is going to be our next set of options we're going to look at. Now DCS World provides us with two ways of adding clouds to our scenes. We have presets that we can check by che clicking on this box right here. And we can see we have a number of different presets that we can set here. And if you can see what these presets actually have in them by hovering our mouse over one of them, and we can see we have a METAR that gives us a really good idea of what the clouds are going to look at, look like that is. So, we also have a second option, which is kind of like the custom clouds option, which is the density option down here, where we can select essentially what is the percentage of density of clouds covering the sky over the terrain. Let's go ahead and set this to five, and we'll bring the base of the clouds up to 16,500 feet-ish. We'll also increase the thickness of our clouds so the thickest they possibly can go. Why don't we go ahead and add some precipitation, because having rain falling to the ground and a bunch of verga around us is also going to add a lot of depth to the scene, because we're going to see rain that's coming from clouds that are further away, maybe verga coming from clouds that are a little bit closer, things of that nature that are going to make a really beautiful scene for us. We can go ahead and keep the ice halo on auto or you can put it onto all mediums if you really want to see as many different ice halos as you possibly can, which is always a very cool effect. Now, if you are going to add clouds to a scene or to a mission, I highly recommend adding some wind to that scene, especially if you are flying from an aircraft carrier, whether that be a helo from an aircraft carrier, a um, harrier from the Tarawa, or a Hornet or a Tomcat from the Supercarrier, because having some wind over the deck is of course essential for being able to launch off of that carrier, but also having some white caps in the water and some nice waves and things like that are also going to add to the depth of the scene. Having just very flat glassy water makes the water in DCS look very just like blah and boring in the same way that having no sh shadows on the terrain makes things look very boring as well. So we'll go ahead and add some wind. Let's put 12 knots down on the deck and we'll have 50, 25 knots up at 1600 feet. As a result, we'll go with 20 knots up at 6600 feet. And how about uh, let's go for 42 knots up at 26,000 feet. If you're creating an operational mission where you're actually going to go out and stay to hit a target, drop some bombs on something, and you have a pretty big cloud cover over the target area, I recommend also having some wind in there so that way the clouds are blowing across that target and you might randomly have a couple holes that you can dive through through the clouds to actually hit that target, which can be a very fun and very good way to add some more interactivity to your mission as well. So we have all these current options set here in our mission, 
And I think this is going to give us something that's going to look really, really nice. So we can see sunsets at 1228. Let's put this right at 1225. Let's really kind of fine tune this guy here. And I think that this should look a lot, lot nicer. So let's hop back to the cockpit of our FA-18 and see what we get. Oh man, guys, what a massive difference this makes compared to the scene we just took a look at. We can see that DCS World is now living up to the standard set by all those beautiful trailers and all the awesome videos from all the different content creators that contribute to the DCS World community. And the best part is, these simple and small tips and changes we can make in the mission editor are something that everyone can influence regardless of their PC specs, and these very simple tweaks account for almost 90% of the difference you're going to see in the visual fidelity of your copy of DCS World. So I hope you guys really see what a major difference this makes to the gameplay in DCS World, the graphical fidelity in DCS World, as well as your enjoyment of DCS World as a whole. And you won't be disappointed if you just hop into that mission editor, change the time of day of your training scenario or the mission that you're currently flying, and enjoy the beautiful eye candy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. And I sincerely hope that it helps, especially the new guys out there who are feeling a little bit let down by the graphical fidelity of DCS World or are maybe having a hard time matching all of the different graphics options in DCS to their PC specs. So. If you did like the video, please leave a, leave a like and a subscribe, and fly safe out there, and we'll see you in the next one. Enjoy this beautiful game, guys.